Hi everyone, this is uh, my womb bin. It's not um, earthworms, it's composting worms and they're called red wigglers. Here's one right here, so I'm gonna just put them aside, put them back in there. there go. I've had this bin since uh, the first week of June and I'm just checking up on the wounds right now. I started in this bin um, with about a hundred and just over a hundred wounds. And according to what I hear is that they multiply really rapidly and in about three to four months they can if things are right double in population. What I'm doing now is fluffing the bin just to get some moisture in there and looking for eggs or cocoons actually. Okay, I have some egg cotton. Here's a good size worm right here. Here's a small worm right here. I think they have um, grown a lot in numbers because there's a lot of babies in here but I'm looking for cocoons which I plan to separate. Oh, right there is a cocoon. See it? This little green thing that's a fresh cocoon probably just released from a matured adult. Okay. Oh, here's an adult right here. Okay, right? This little bulgy thing, it's called a clitellum, and that is the sexual organ of the womb. Once you see that little bulgy thing, you know that it's uh, close to maturity, or it's matured, and he, can, he or she can start making babies. Uh, each womb has both sexes, believe it or not. They're hermaphrodites, but it takes two worms to still uh, make babies. They exchange spoons and whatnot. So I'm gonna say to this guy, go find a friend and get busy. Here you go. Good boy. Or girl. Alright. Let's see. Oh yes. They seem to like egg cartons or you know cardboard. Here, here's a lot of worms hanging out on the moist cardboard. Alright, similar vision time. It doesn't smell bad. If you go into the forest and you smell the earth, it's just like that because it's all, it's all good, natural waste products from the womb. Whoop! Oh, here's a piece of corn, and they don't really have teeth, but they are uh, they like sweet, um, sweet fruit and sweet corn. So here you see little babies and some you know matured ones hanging around corn they're working out on this corn right here i think i put this about two weeks ago so it's they're slowly feeding on them i don't have a huge number of worms so it takes them quite a while to go through the food and the important thing is not to overfeed them because if you overfeed them the food will rot and it will form an acidic soil which is not healthy for them and they will die okay here's a little guy right here oops you'll be fine don't worry all right so that's good that's a good thing mm -hmm. any big ones in here That's it for my first bin. What I'll do is sort of get this all organized and I'll go on to my second bin, which is very similar, but it has um, roughly about 150 worms in it. About, uh, a thousand worms can fit comfortably in one square foot of um, area. And once you have about five to six inches of uh, call it bedding you should be fine because they're surface worms 
and they tend to stay within the first six inches usually. Okay, let's see. Get fruit flies. One way to avoid fruit flies is to freeze your, you know, banana peels and all that before you give it to them, so that any eggs that are on the uh, the peels are destroyed. If you freeze for over half a day, it should be sufficient. Okay, so here's another fruit fly. Don't bite you. Okay, you're gone. Okay, let's see what we have in here. Okay, that's a big one down there. Okay, here he is. Yeah, th this is a matured red worm, red wiggler. It's got some good color to him, good size too. Oh my goodness. See his yellow tail? They have yellow tails. Uh, oh, see the ball chair in this one? That's the cl clitellum. So this one is capable of um, making babies. Oh my God. Okay, hey, these two would probably just meet in and look. There is a cocoon right here. So I'm not sure if it came out from this one because they were both clinging on together and that's exactly what they do. So this might be a fresh cocoon or maybe by chance it was there when they were um, saying hi to each other. Alright, so that, that, that is good. Put this cocoon back. These are two adults right here. See the bulges? It's nice and they, they all look healthy, which is, which is a good thing. You don't want skinny, skinny wounds. You want, you want them with some size. And one reason why I wanted to start with a, a smaller size bin is that, you know, they can find each other. Uh, later on, as they grow in numbers, and if I get up to a pound, I will uh, definitely move them into a, like a Rubbermaid tub, which would be about maybe four square feet. And that'll be a nice big home for them as they grow in numbers. All right. So that's it. That's my, um, that's my worm bin. And when I first started, these were in the garage and the summer has been very, very hot. I think a few adults died and when I saw that, I had to kind of sneak them into the uh, cold room here, the uh, the furnace room. Even though it's the furnace room, in, in summertime, the AC is on and it's very cool right here. So it's at the lower spectrum of the comfortable range, which is about maybe, what, 15 degrees Celsius to about 20... 28-ish, I think. Okay, so that's good. This, this pen looks great. And um, what I'm going to do is move some of these cocoons into the wormery and uh, probably have a next video later on.